Every year, over 100 million people go through passport control to get into Britain. Most are welcome and legal, many are not. For the first time on television, we go behind the scenes of the UK Border Agency, the men and women on the front line of immigration. Tonight, hidden human cargo in Calais. Are you all Iraqi? Are they all Iraqi? Enforcement raids in Somerset. Police and immigration, open up! And it's all too much for a passenger held at Heathrow. My life is right there in your hands. That's all me right there. That's right. But yet still I'm locked away like a prisoner. More than a million passengers every month arrive at Heathrow's Terminal 3. Many are from some of the world's poorest countries. Next please. How long will you all be staying for? There you go. Thank you. Lisa Lee has been an immigration officer for two years. It's her job to make sure each passenger has a valid reason to enter Britain. Today, she stopped a woman from South Africa traveling on a visit visa. The woman also has an out-of-date letter. It's for a beauty training course called Steiner. ...organization that do beauty training for employees of cruise ships. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to ring Steiner before I do anything else, because if they can confirm she's coming on a training course, then it may not be more than just a quick chat with her. Um, we have a passenger arrived today um, from South Africa. Um, she's presented two um, Steiner letters from last year and she claims to be coming on a training course starting shortly. I just wondered if you were able to tell us if she's registered. You're not expecting her. OK, they don't have any record of her on the training course. The passenger's reason for coming to Britain is thrown into doubt. Officer Lee wants to know if what she's carrying in her bags tells another story. You told the officer when you arrived that you were coming for a training course. Do you have a definite place on a course, a training course in the UK? Um, whatever you last. Do you have a place on a training course in the UK, yes or no? No, ma'am. So why did you tell the officer that you had a place on a training course when you don't? Um, sorry if I, I said my answer very wrong. She appears to have very little cash. In fact, no money at all to speak of. And she's brought with her CVs, which you don't really bring on holiday and all her beauty training certificates, which I guess you could say could be legitimately there if she's planning to enrol on a training course or hoping to embark on another cruise ship. But other than that, she's got no real reason why she would have her CVs with her. I'm just concerned that she may have worked here previously and she may be intending to work in the UK. What is the purpose of your visit? Me joining the ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. OK, I spoke to the agency and they're not expecting you. Why didn't you arrange your place on the training course before you came? I don't know where to start. <laughs> OK, you know, just the, like, where I come from, the place where I live. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of friends here in London. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And um, I wanted to leave Cape Town, like, where I'm from, because... Mm -hmm. I didn't want to spend any more money and obviously because I was going to be the one who buys my own ticket. Right. And because of um, the ship being the only bread, you know, and me helping out my brother to go to college. <laughs> so the only way you earn money is on the ships, mm -hmm. yeah? You OK? Yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, it seems like a long way to come if you haven't got a place on the course already sorted. Would you, why didn't you do it before you came? Would have been easier, wouldn't it? You could have got the letter from them and everything. It would have made your life a lot easier. Is there a problem back home? I'm the only person that's looking out for me and my family. You're the only one that has any money and that support. You're, so are you supporting the whole family on your salaries, yeah? Okay. 
Before Officer Lee allows the woman through passport control, she must consult her boss, Chief Immigration Officer Matt Dyson. I can sympathise with anybody who feels you know, they've got to work hard for their family mm. and, and have to leave their own country to do it. Mm. Fine. But in the end, she falls well short of the requirements for entry as far she as does. I'm concerned. She she's, she's, she's basically not to tell the truth on arrival. No. She doesn't have enough funds. There's a flight this evening um, if we want to remove her today via Doha. OK, well, as it stands, unless we hear anything Hello. different, I'm sorry, but she we'll will have, have to go home. OK. Thanks, anyway. No problem. This is particularly tough because I've been to where she lives. Um, I know the township she comes from. And it's pretty horrible. Most places don't have electricity. You know, it's rough. So the money this girl is on when she's on board ship is a lot of money in South Africa. So she would be supporting her mum and brother. Um, and you're, in a way, you're kind of robbing her of the chance to provide for her family. And it just you just think, well, I'm sending her back. I'm afraid it's not very good news. OK, you are going to be refused entry to the UK today. All right. She just doesn't qualify today for entry. If she can satisfy either an entry clearance officer in the future or another immigration officer in the future that she qualifies for entry on another day, then her case will be viewed on its merits. It doesn't automatically exclude her from coming back to the UK in the future. Coming up. Unlucky for some at the bingo hall. I'm arresting you now on suspicion of being an overstay in the United Kingdom. But it's a full house for the team in Calais. 420, 4.30, let's go in. It's estimated there are up to one million people living illegally in the UK. Many come into the country on a tourist visa, but find a way to stay on and work illegally. One problem for the immigration service is the number of Brazilians who use fake Portuguese ID cards. In Yeovil, Somerset, an enforcement team led by PC Phil Artingstall has been given a tip off that Brazilian illegal immigrants are working in a bingo hall. Information has been received to the effect that there are several Brazilian nationals working at the bingo hall in Yeovil. These persons are all believed to be using counterfeit Portuguese documents to obtain employment. The intention is to enter and search the premises and detain all staff members for immigration checks. Being Portuguese speakers, Brazilians with fake ID can convince an employer they belong to the European Union and have the right to work. We believe that the, uh, the Brazilian staff are being used uh, as catering workers and working on the kiosks in the, in the actual bingo hall itself. Can somebody check there, please? Hi, can you just stay there for me, please? OK, is the manager about police and immigration? Um, we have a warrant here to enter and search this premises and speak to your staff because we have reason to believe that some of the staff that are working here are illegally in the country. With such a large building to search, the team split up to make sure no workers are missed. We just want to make sure there's no one hiding, basically. Yeah. Clear. You never know what you're going to find, that's the thing. You never know how, you know how big something is and where someone could be hiding. OK, you want to take a seat, please, sir? Sierra, who's not in tonight. Thank you. And the manager has produced documentation to us in relation to members of staff that he employs. We're just checking them to make sure there's no uh, anomalies uh, with the documents and their possible counterfeits. Immigration officer Ronnie Watson discovers that this woman's family is from Brazil. Mother's Brazilian, uh, so, so what, what's your na nationality? Do you have Portuguese nationality? OK. He checks the woman's details against the Home Office database. OK, so, that, so there's nothing, nothing to say that she's actually got uh, Port uh, Portuguese nationality. 
basically all we've got on uh, home office systems is that uh, she's um, a Brazilian national and she had a six-month visit visa um, so I'm just going to go and ask her a few more questions to uh, see why she's still here. Uh, have you got um, a Portuguese passport? No. You haven't got a Portuguese passport? Just a Portuguese ID card? The young lady that sat there has um, produced to the employer a Portuguese ID card um, which is on her employment file. We've run some checks on our system. She comes back as uh, somebody of the same name, the same date of birth, having entered the UK as a visitor on a Brazilian passport. She's denying this and she's stating that uh, she's actually Portuguese and she entered on her Portuguese ID card. OK, Mr. Barbosa, we, we've got uh, conflicting uh, stories here, OK? Um, to that end, um, I'm arresting you now on suspicion of being an overstay in the United Kingdom. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Should she not be a Portuguese national, uh, she is actually Brazilian, then she'll be taken to the police station and we'll uh, make arrangements to remove her from the country. First, the team want to search for the woman's fake ID and, crucially, her genuine passport. If their records are correct, it would prove she's Brazilian and overstayed her visa. You'd just like to take a seat for a moment. Whereabouts is your, um, your um, ID card? I miss them. I don't have any. You don't have it? No. And you don't have your passport? OK. Have you got anything at all to prove that you're, you're Portuguese? Nothing at all? Oh, no. no? Phil Spot receiving. Yeah, lady claims not to have... Uh, any. Yeah, I'll we'll receive them. Um, if you have a, a look in the obvious places, then um, have a quick search. And once you're happy, um, give us a shout. They're received. The team has a lot to search through. <laughs> the bingo hall worker seems to have accumulated a lot of stuff during her time here. Now she decides to help out. You find one green bag. A bag. Green backpack? No, backpack. A backpack? Green no, backpack. not in there. The bag should be in here, did you say? Yeah. It's dawning on her that she's in trouble and that we're not going to accept the fact that she's Portuguese. So she's trying to come up with little snippets of information um, and then hopefully she'll eventually divulge to us where her Brazilian passport is. Giovanni, what, what we don't want to have to do is keep you in custody for longer than we have to. I know, but I try to. The only place that she'll be is in there. She said that she's fine with me. But she'll be there. Okay. All right. Just have a seat. Relax. Sometimes the, the thought of us going through people's um, personal things tend to um, make them uh, show us where these things will be, but obviously that's not going to work in this case. Do you know where the passport is? If I knew, I would get it. Okay. But it's a Brazilian passport, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. The team did not find the woman's passport. But in a formal interview, she admitted to being Brazilian and an illegal worker. After two days in detention, she was sent back to Brazil. Calais is the bottleneck of Europe. Trucks from the continent and beyond queue here to come into Britain. One and a half million of them every year. It's an ideal opportunity for those who want to smuggle their way to the UK. There are over 400 British immigration officers working in this corner of France. Just starting his night shift is Officer John Cassidy. So we're in the port of Calais at the entrance. The passport boots here are where the uh, French English control zone begins. So from here we have jurisdiction until it gets down onto the boat by the berths here. So as the lorries approach here, they show their passports at the booth where they'll be checked to make sure they're allowed to travel on. We will then select vehicles to be searched in our shed. This selection process is known as spotting. After two years at Calais, Officer Cassidy knows what to look for. But we have certain vehicles we like to look out for. If they don't like being secured, 
find out if they've been sleeping in the port area outside, which is where most illegals will try to enter the vehicle. So the job here is just to traffic management and make sure that the right vehicles get selected for searching. In 2007, immigration officers stopped nearly 12,000 people trying to cross the channel hidden in lorries. That's more than 30 every day. Chief Immigration Officer Kerry Lockie is prepared for a busy night. The optimum time that we have fines are between 2 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock in the morning, purely and simply because that's when the lorry drivers are sleeping. So it is usually without their knowledge, illegals manage to get into the vehicles. Slow from Calais? No, <laughs> non stop. Van Lock, this. The officer's favourite tool is the CO2 probe. It detects the breathing of anyone hiding in the truck. No, it looks good. No, it's clear. It's fine, yeah, yeah it's, it's clear. All clear. We're clear with that. A little less high tech, but equally effective the nose. Well, the bonfire smell that we tend to get when we open them up is because they've been living rough in camps around the area. We understand, obviously, they've got the old bonfires and whatnot going to keep themselves warm, so that's a distinct smell that we, we tend to find when we open up the lorries. Sometimes they're unlucky enough to wear um, shoes with reflective strips on them, which helps give them away. You put the torch and it just flashes up on you. It's nearly home time for the team. They've checked more than 100 trucks during the night, but still they haven't found any illegal entrance. You got something? Hang on a minute, I've just got in. I'm going straight up though. 420, 4.30, let's go in. As we put the probe in, the reading started to rise quite dramatically immediately, which is usually a good sign. It means that someone might have been in there for quite a while. CO2 builds up, so it doesn't take long for it to be drawn into the probe. Go straight up and we get excited then. Is that all the way down? The lorry's load is industrial drain pipes. They look like they go all the way through, though. Yeah. How many can you see? Three so far. Oh, I can smell. You can smell. There's pipe that goes all the way along, but there's a slight gap to one side, and I think they must have crawled along there. And from what we can see, where it dips down, there's some shoulders and some tops of heads. We think four, five possibly at the moment. One of my colleagues is down there speaking to him at the moment. It's pipe work all the way down. There's four just hidden at 10, 15 foot down on the further side. What you're going to have to do now is take the curtain off at the side, get a better picture of it. Just can't really see from here. Need a bit more light. There he is. Are you all Iraqi? Are they all Iraqi? No. You? Yeah, you sure? You keep smiling. We're um, just trying to confirm anybody's actually in here at the moment and their nationalities. Take some photos in situ to show how they got in and where they are hiding for future reference and then we'll try to get them down safely. Just you next to Charlie, one minute, wait. Next step is to match their photographs to the names. The majority of these people do not carry documents at all because they don't really want to be identified with their country. Um, and also, a lot of them don't actually have documents anyway because of the countries that they come from. This is what it's all about, actually. You, you feel like you've done your job, this is what we're here for, to try and find these people. You know they're trying to get here, so you get a, a buzz and a satisfaction when you do finally get you searching all night long <laughs> to finally get at least someone. You know it's been worthwhile. That's five more people who haven't been successful on this occasion. They will no doubt try again at some stage and hopefully we'll be able to thwart them again. And they won't be successful next time. But it's what we're here for. And if you don't catch them, you don't feel like you're doing your job. So this is a nice one. This makes you go home on a bus now and go, yeah, good one last night. The driver was fined £500 and the owner of his vehicle a further £1,500. Coming up, the student the who doesn't make the grade... Either you're not telling me the truth, sir, or the college isn't. And you? Portuguese or not yeah. Portuguese, that is the question. Right, to say. Say. It's been altered. It's been altered. The, the, the details have been altered on it.
At Terminal 3, teams of immigration officers work round the clock checking every new arrival. Officer Kay Lomas was a teacher before she joined the UK Border Agency. She knows when someone's trying to pull the wool over her eyes. Today, she's investigating an Indian national returning to Britain on a student visa. Now, we have your suitcase, the rucksack and this. Yeah. Are these all of your bags? Yeah. Before you came to study here, you did a three years course in India. Yeah. Was that, what's BCA? BCA, Bachelor in Computer Education. So you've got a bachelor's degree in computers. Computers, yeah. Do you want for university? Actually, I came here on demand for the university, MSc in Multimedia Communication. Yes. But when I came here, they told me that they don't have enough students for MSc in Multimedia Communication. The passenger was given a student visa a year ago. He had a place on a master's degree course at a prestigious Midlands University. The course was cancelled and he now says he's studying at a college in London, even though he lives in Leicester. Officer Lomas reports her findings so far to the Chief Immigration Officer, Sarah Dyson. I've done his bags, not found much in there to be honest. Um, He's got his national insurance card. He's got some business cards for a garment factory that's run by his cousin brother, who have um, established as his first cousin. He's got no student card for this college in London. So he looks like he's had a pretty good education. He has. He, well, he, uh, he's just said to me he's done a three-year bachelor's computing course. In India? In India. And how long has he been in the UK for? Since 2006. And he's been doing more IT-based diplomas, which you would not really need had you done a bachelor's in IT, I would think. It's very difficult for us to believe that he's genuinely studying in East London if he lives in Leicester. And he's told you he lives in Leicester. I mean, which of us on this planet would really want to commute 200 miles a day to attend college for, what, a couple of hours, maybe three hours? And what student would, could afford that? It, is, it has no credibility whatsoever, so I mean, that's, that's the main thing that we should concentrate yeah. on. Officer Lomas calls the passenger's cousin. She hopes he can confirm that his relative is studying in London. Hello, sir. Are you expecting anyone to arrive in the UK today? And how do you know us, man? You own a factory. And what kind of factory is it? Ma manufacturing ladies' wear. So he's, he packs the garments. You mentioned that he's also a student. What does he do? You have no idea what he studies. Every time that he goes to college, do you take him every single time? Yes. So you should be able to tell me which days he goes to college then if you take him there. Mm. When was the last time he went to London to college? Last Thursday. Wasn't he in India at that time? He, he wasn't in UK then, was he? Very vague about when he goes to college. Has no idea what he does in college at all. Can't tell me which subject he studies. Can't tell me the name of the college, but he apparently drops him off there every week, three times a week. Um, but he's very clear on his position in the factory, which leads me to believe that, leads me to doubt the fact that he's a full-time student here because it's just a bit strange to me. Now that doubts are raised over the passenger's studies, Officer Lomas makes a second call. This time to the college where he claims to be studying. Could you just confirm the name of the student that you have? I want to know all the details about his current course. When he started, what's he studying, when was the last time he attended college? Is he studying with you at the moment? It should be quite a simple yes or no answer to that, sir, really. When was the last time he attended? When was the last day that he came to college? 15th of November. Thank you. Mm -hmm. According to the college, the student has not attended at all in the last six months. And what was his attendance rate for his previous course? How can it be 82% if he already missed four weeks? Right, so his attendance rate for his last course was 82. 
could you tell me a bit more about your college, please? St Paul College. It's on the third floor. Okay. And then your college is on the fourth floor and that's it. So we're talking four colleges in one building. The reason I asked so many questions to him is because what I want to do is go and if this man is a genuine student, if he is a full-time student here, he should be able to answer basic questions about his tutors, about the modules he studied, about the building, what facilities they've got, um, how much fees he's paid. So I'm going to put all these questions to him in the interview. If he can answer them all and he's very confident in, in what he says about his studies, then that's fine. But if, the, if he can't tell me these things, obviously that's something that I need to be worried about. Usually diplomas and degrees have modules within them of study. What did you do? I studied basic programming Microsoft Office, and then it got to C, programming in C. What was the title of the courses called? That's what I want to know. The titles? Yes, of the courses that you studied. Modules. It, it, was, for, it was like subjects to me. What is your attendance like? What is your attendance rate? Have you missed any lessons? My attendance should be... 85 percent. Mm -hmm. Right. Now then, sir, have you been telling me the truth during yeah. this interview? Yes. Well, then we've got a problem because I have spoken to your college okay. at length today and they're telling me a very different story than the one that you've just said to me. I spoke to Mr. Suleiman Khan, who tells me he's an admin clerk at your college. He tells me that you've not attended the postgraduate diploma at all. In fact, when I, when I asked him when was the last time they saw you, he says it was November 2007. When was the last time, and I want the month, and I preferably want the week, when was the last time you studied, you attended classes in the United Kingdom? Last July. Thank you. What have you been doing in that eight and a half months, sir? Sitting at home. I don't believe you. You have to. I'm not lying this time. Now, I'm concerned that your college did not tell me that you didn't attend from July to November. They said your attendance rate was 82%. What's going on? I'm sure you know there are many colleges that supply letters to students. I don't know. And that say that students have attended college and that accept money so that they produce letters to that effect and diplomas. Either you're not telling me the truth, sir, or the college isn't. Is this college a genuine college? Do they have lectures there? I've not been there, I don't know. They just told me that your attendance will be done. Your attendance will be done? Did they ever charge you any money, sir, to, for the fact that they were fixing your attendance? Yes. OK. What did they charge you? 500 quid. For? The attendance. Just to clarify, the 500 pounds was so that they said you had attended when you hadn't attended. Yes. Realising his UK residence permit is in danger of being cancelled, the student makes an appeal. I want to study, ma'am. My future will be ruined. Why would it be ruined? Without a post-graduation, I'm nothing. That's not true. Yes, ma'am, it is. You've told us the truth now about your studies, which was the right thing to do, but in hindsight, 
you should have been attending, shouldn't you? You applied to do a master's at De Montfort University, a good university, excellent course, and since then things have just gone downhill. Come on. Obviously he was very upset at the end of the interview there. He's been caught out. I continued to press him on, on the college because I, I had an inkling that the college wasn't genuine from what he'd said. In the end, he did admit that they were supplying letters to students. I will pass that on to our intelligence unit and they will check that out and th that college will then be on a list of, of colleges that we will look into further. Officer Lomas makes her final report to her boss. And he has a UK residence permit issued for the purpose of studies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Only a month ago. Only a month ago. So he was quite happy to deceive the Home Office only a month ago. Yes. Um, well, once again, I think, um, without a shadow of a doubt, we'll have to refuse this guy entry and cancel his uh, yeah. residence permit. The passenger is refused entry to Britain and put on the next plane back to India. It's not an easy thing to um, have to be very harsh with somebody like that. But on the other hand, you feel sorry for the people who are genuinely studying here and then people like that gentleman who would come here and just flout the rules really to get a residence permit and don't study. It's not on. It's estimated that up to 5,000 foreign students a year enrol at British colleges with no intention to study. In Yeovil, the enforcement team continue their search for Brazilians posing as Portuguese. The next stop is a flat above a shop on the high street. Unfortunately, while they're knocking on the front door, people seem to be escaping from the back. In what direction, over? Right. Nick? Oh yeah, we've got some runners at the top here, over. Do you want us to attend? Yeah, where did they go? Straight up there. Yeah. Two Hurry up! Open the door! We'll Two of our team members. Right, we've got one on mill. Do you want to go and see if you can... Police and immigration, open up! Because we've got one inside, but he won't open up. Come to the front door! So open the door! Right, thanks. Thank you, you very me. much. Where's your friend? There was two of you. Come here. There's one just gone round the back. Right, come up here now. Stand there. Do not move. OK, stand there. Tracy, yeah. he appeared to go into the back of the shop. So if you want to stay here, I'll just run down and see. He appeared to, when I saw him, he seemed to go into the rear of the shop. You come downstairs, please. Now, with me. Inside, the team find two people. They think at least three others were here just a few moments ago. I'm going to need name, your name, your nationality and your date of birth, or I need to see an ID doc. Where's your passports? OK, one passport upstairs. Do you want to take him up, Laura? You're the two men Charlie. claim to be Portuguese. If they are, it means they can legally work in the UK as members of the EU. But they need to be able to prove it with a passport or ID card. We'll, we will look for it. We will look for it. If you can't find it, we'll look. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's your passport? Yeah, roger that. Is this you? Is that you? Yeah. Is that all you've got? Have you got a, have you got a passport? Yes. yes. This is what you were looking for? Please. OK, come downstairs. Because the subject's got a Portuguese ID card. Um, obviously, the intelligence is that they're um, using counterfeit Portuguese ID cards. We're obviously looking at all of the, um, the safeguards, the forgery safeguards that the card has on it to try and establish um, whether or not it is indeed a counterfeit. I reckon it's probably a sub-photo and yeah, change of date of birth. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you look at the, there's a lot it's, of dirt under yeah. there. Lines. I think, yeah. I think we're, we're safe to say that uh, this gentleman is not a true Portuguese national. It's been altered. It's been altered. The, the, the details have been altered on it. it. It might possibly be a genuine card that's obviously been stolen at some point and they've altered some of the details and, possibly, and put his photo in it.
Could you explain to the gentleman that I'm going to arrest him as a, a legal entrant into the UK? Okay, he does not have to say anything to me, but anything he does say, I will take down and use in evidence. Okay, he will be properly explained the full caution um, by an interpreter once we get to the police station. Thank you. Now under arrest, the man admits to the team that his passport is in his room. Okay, all right. We're going upstairs to get this man's Brazilian passport. Oh, hang on. Here. You weren't pointing there. Yeah, that's him. We found, um, obviously, this man's passport to show that he was refused leave to enter at Brussels in 2008. Um, this shows me that he's been refused leave to enter in the UK. We've also found a passport for um, what would appear to be his girlfriend. Um, they travelled on the same day, they've both been refused leave to enter. They've obviously then both um, gained counterfeit Portuguese ID cards from somewhere and both travelled in on those. We found also found her Portuguese ID card. So. Yep, go. I think we can safely say there was at least one other person here that we saw, three in total that have run from here. I mean, clearly, there's at least four bedrooms um, and they're all lived in. Both the Brazilians found in the flat were arrested and detained. The man with the fake ID card was sent back to Brazil. <laughs> along with his flatmate who had overstayed his six-month visit visa. Coming up, breaking point at Heathrow. Man, listen, man, I know some rights too, man. I'm getting fed up. It's midday at Heathrow. An overnight flight from America landed five hours ago. One of the passengers is still at Terminal 3. He recently became a US citizen. Before this, as a Jamaican, he was refused a UK visa due to lack of funds. This is why he's being investigated by Officer Mark Washington. Mr. Brom, is it? Braham. Braham. OK, do you want to come up, please, sir? I mean, as it stands at the moment, he's been refused a visa in January, so that's not looking great for him. But at the same time, one of the reasons he was refused is that finances weren't great. So what I'll do is I'll assess to see if anything's changed since he was refused his visit visa. This is your family, yeah? Yeah. That's the stuff I'm taking from my wife um, cousin. OK. Do you have a wallet or anything like that? If I could just check that. Do you have any more cash at all? Yeah. How much other stuff do you have? A hundred dollars, okay. This is a credit card, yeah? How much money do you have access to on your credit card? $3,000. Officer Washington accepts that $3,000 available on credit is enough to fund the passenger's trip. But he still wants to find out how the man's circumstances have changed since he was refused a visa. Okay, what job is it that you do in the States? I drive a bus for the state. Okay, what family does your wife have here? She has aunties, cousins. And why hasn't she travelled with you? She just started a job. Okay. What's the reason for your trip to the UK? Is it a friend? Okay, what's your friend's name? Uh, Leanne Lamac. And how did you guys meet? Uh, through a friend. Okay, how exactly would you describe your relationship with her? Strictly friends. Okay. Not, it, it's, it's not to him, it's just friends. Follow me, sir. We'll put you back in the room, then I'll speak to my chief immigration officer. Hopefully 10, 15 minutes. He's saying for a week um, to stay with a friend. He's saying that he's only known her for about since about... December time. So who's looking after the kids? They're with his wife. She's starting a new job almost this week. That's right. They have five kids under 12 and he's chosen to come on holiday. That's right and they all live, I mean he... he and he's come on holiday to a friend that he really doesn't know anything about and maybe visit the wife's family whose address he hasn't bothered to That's bring right, with him. Yeah. 
doesn't sit that well. That. It's one or two areas we'd be quite happy to speak to the wife on. Right, let's ring her up. Okay, I'll go and do that. The passenger's wife has plenty to be coping with, while her husband visits a friend in Britain. Now Officer Washington has to call her in America, where it's six in the morning. I've got your husband here, and I wonder if I could just ask you a couple of questions about his trip to the UK? OK, and um, who is it that he's coming to visit? One thing I just wanted to go over, he's saying that the friend he's got here in the UK, he's saying to me he only met them sort of in about December time. Um, but you're saying they're childhood friends. I mean, I don't quite know how that can be the case. I mean, I mean, in terms of the discrepancy. OK, um, to be honest, I think that's all I need to ask you, madam. Thank you very much for your help. And I'm sorry about waking you up. Um, I'll go and speak to your husband now. But anyway, thank you very much for helping me. OK, then. Bye. Before Officer Washington can update his boss, he's called to the holding room where his passenger is far from happy. And that's before he knows about the call to his wife. I understand the Americans are not overly happy. OK. Hello, sir. My papers is what you guys require, right? So why am I locked away in a room for six hours like I'm a prisoner? Okay, now, sir. Listen, man, I know some rights too, man. I'm getting fed up. Okay, so sir, I've explained why you've been locked in the room. Yeah, but that's crazy. You have everything right there all about me. I have got it all, sir, and I've just spoken yes, to your sir. wife, and that's what I need to do. I need to go back to my chief immigration Has officer. Have you talked to my wife? Yeah, I have. She said that this is the person you'll be visiting is a lifelong friend. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one I met her through. Okay, so that yeah. friend lives here in the UK as well? You know what? Yeah, he lives there too. Okay. Yeah. Are you it's sure you like don't want another drink or anything like that? Okay. It's like this. Yeah. My life is right there in your hands. That's all me right there. That's right. But yet still I'm locked away like a prisoner, man. Okay, sir. I'm getting fed up. I, to yeah, I totally understand that. Yeah. The decision is going to be made. I'm just going to go and speak to my chief immigration officer about it now. Then once I've spoken to him, we will make the decision and then it'll be done and dusted. You'll either stay here and go back home or you'll come into the country and be landed. One, anyone will be fine. Man. OK, if you just sit down, I'll go and do it now and I'll be back as soon as I can. Do we think there's more to this than just a friend? I honestly don't know. I mean, my initial reaction was that maybe there was. He said, no, no, we're just friends, we're just friends. Nothing more than that. All I'm bothered about, is he going to do something that he shouldn't do when he's here? And I don't think he is. No. Is he going to go back when he says he's going to go back? I, I reckon he probably is. He is yeah. Yeah, um, end of story as far as I'm okay. concerned. There's been a change of circumstances in his favour since the visa was issued. Yeah. His wife now has the job. That's right, yeah. Finances make more sense. Yeah. It's not up to us to run his family life for him. OK. Let him go. Now a decision has been reached. All that's left is to tell the passenger. We're going to land you. So here's your passport back and your ticket. If you want to grab your luggage, you're free to go. The area where we search your bag, if you go through there, you should meet your friend who should be there waiting for you. I'm going to give her a ring now okay. just to say that you're coming out, okay? Uh, okay. All right, no problem. Brand new to Sky One later, be a fly on the wall in the battle against drugs. See how Detroit's special agents take down the heroin kingpin in drug wars at 11. Next here on Sky One, it's the return of brand new Prison Break, and there's a traitor lurking. And by the way, never miss either of those by setting up Series Link. Just go to your planner and press the green button now.